Good morning, everybody. Welcome once again to BTL Bass Talk Live, where we're going to talk bass fishing and anything else that we want to talk about. Things getting kicked off on the FLW Tour in Florida, Matthew, but it was a late night for me last night. <clears throat> me as well. All right. One of the guys, girls, women, men, it doesn't matter. Probably one of the best hockey games that I've ever seen last yeah, night. Top three for the uh, Olympic winning. Did not top... The miracle on ice, but pretty damn close. Well, I was negative four when that happened, so I, I'd have to rank it. But yeah, the American women won in a sudden death shootout with some awesome moves, and oh, great goaltending, and very I was entertaining. At the, at the edge of my couch the entire time. I don't think I went to bed past uh, two o'clock. It was awesome. Yeah. Did you uh, happen to see? Number three from Canada immediately take her silver medal yes, off after I winning it. I did. I did. I thought that was kind we're of... Not, we're not ever going to have that situation in fishing because there's never a second place trophy. Well, that's not true. There are in, in the BFLs and in some of the lower divisions. <laughs> I, I immediately thought back to it would be like losing the BFL by an ounce and you wanted that little bronze jumping largemouth trophy yeah. and they hand you the second that just has the red BFL oval yeah. and you just toss it over your shoulder into the lake. <laughs> Don't you, you know what? It's exactly what it would be like. Everyone would be going, man, I would love to get second. You just take the thing and turn it into some structure. Dude, it's been so long. Do they still hand out multiple At trophies? BFLs, yeah, yeah, Do yeah, they yeah, really? 100%. Right then, boom. Yeah, because I've got one of them. And they I was, still do I was, it, I was disappointed, was but I was proud of it. It was, was like, that like four, four years, years ago? ago. Yeah, they still do it. I know they do. And they do it in the in the ever in the just, uh, coastas just and all that. Just chuck the, right the trophy there. right there off the dock. I'll flip that next year. Catch a keeper off. Of it. Oh, but oh yeah, awesome. Goodness. And then we also uh, we also beat Canada in men's curling. So we're I headed like to the, that, that happened this morning, just moments ago. So I hope I'm super excited. I did uh, I did have a gentleman's bet with with Mr. Mercer on the women's hockey game. The Canadian. Yes, he is. He is Canadian. Yes. So, uh, uh, I mean, it was a small bet, but I've well, got like a dollar. Yeah. Well, I've got a an, a signed Rojas. Yes. Uh, I've got a signed Charlie Hartley that says, "Quote: You beat my ass, <laughs> Charlie Hartley." When we went fishing earlier this year. Yeah. And then I still have the signed Rob Russo five dollar bill. So I was like, dude, I I'll add it to 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 Mercer to see if he wants in on it last is that night. Canadian dollars. Well, I'm gonna see. If I could get him to sign a, a Canadian, they have a ten dollar Canadian bill, right? That might be a felony in Canada, though. I sure think it might be here, but I'm just trying. <laughs> they're they start using paper at ten, right? I mean, I know they got no coins idea. for one, two. Yeah, I, I no mean, idea. they got all sorts of. I mean, I guess I could so have them sign a loony. Yeah, but no anyway, idea. so yeah. And that's how we related it back to fishing with yeah. the <laughs> chuck the trophy in the water. Yeah, with the trophy. But well, also bringing up about how they were talking about how it's you know a huge step for women's hockey. The last time they won yeah. was '98, and they'd had uh, the runner up to Canada the last couple times. And I said, "Is there?" I was asking you right before we went on air. Has there ever been a moment, a tournament, something in the bass fishing game? that has kind of inspired the next generation and then 10, 15 years later, or even sooner than that, five, six years later, you see a, a spike in uh, people who saw this or, or watched this, were inspired yeah. to bass fish and then started, and you can say, well, that was because of X tournament. I think it was Brian Kershaw. When he won the, the classic the through the Bass Federation. Yeah, and I, I think you definitely saw some growth there. And they if you obviously you weren't around then, but mm -hmm. he was on I some was. of the national shows, like he was on the Today Show and he was on some of the national media and, and really put a focus at this guy who used to be just an a fry cook. At, yeah. Just an Early average 20s. dude that was thrown into the forefront and uh, unfortunately, passed way, way, way too early. But I, I think that might be the only time where it, you saw that spike in activity from a membership standpoint, from a participation standpoint. Where people joined Bass because they saw I it and were so. like, you know what, I kind of casually like to fish. If this guy can do it, that yeah. makes me want to go out and try to do it. And they joined, the, the, they yeah. joined BASS, they joined the, the but Bass But how many Federation. years has that number 
been at a half a million. A, a lot of time. You were, we were also talking about Polinick in uh, 2011 uh, with yeah. what he did in the Classic and burst onto the scene after he won the Bass, which was still called the Federation back then. But I don't know. Uh, I mean, if it was at a half million then, it's at a half million now. So I don't know if you saw the spike after Polinick. But I think you did see a lot of younger anglers who started yeah. taking it more seriously uh, and, and fishing tournaments oh, and wanting to do it. I forgot so. to tell you. You know what I did this weekend? Because I was heavily involved with the editing station right there this weekend today's thursday I know. so we're going I know. back I totally five forgot. days i totally forgot i actually took about an hour probably spent a little bit more than that to actually dive into the guggen squad <laughs> I, I knew nothing about them it yeah it takes about an hour to kind of understand so i got the background and, and i got we're talking about the YouTube yeah. group of guys I who basically what's going on. all started different channels, and yeah. then a couple of companies, if, as I, if I understand it correctly, got them together and basically sponsored them, and they have like a real world house where they all yeah. kind of live and they film their YouTube yeah. various levels of. Very interesting. Yeah, it is. It is very different, but they have quite the following, and uh, I don't know, man. I'd th- I'd like to see. Th- there's this battle going on between. Them are you hooked? And, you now you're the, hooked the on pros. the YouTube fishing. I I, I watched. There it. is. I did. Uh, did I you watch the Scott Martin stuff? I did not. Dude, I am hooked on that. As Brandon, oh, I, didn't say I was hooked. I know. On as it, Brandon but... edits it, I'm like, come on, we need day two of the Pan Am <laughs> games, and they released day two. Go check it out on on Scott Martin's yeah. YouTube channel, yeah. and he fished with Roland in this one. And Roland was a little under the weather, and Roland catches fish sitting down while fishing a cinco. <laughs> well, while si- he took a nap during the tournament, and then he catches him just sitting on a cooler, dragging a Cinco behind the boat, and they come back, and they win the whole dang thing Smash and get him. the gold medals. They had like 23 pounds. Really? And there's Rollins in there. I'm not feeling it. Oh, their own son. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's out there now? Yeah, it's I'm out there right now. It's out. awesome just to see uh, to see those two. So. All right. Uh, good stuff last night, though. Very late night. Uh, the other thing I, I, I do want to mention, I'd say probably within the next seven to ten days, our next addition to the 20 Feet Deep documentary series what would you say, Matthew? We're probably at 95%, maybe yeah. 98%. Yeah, that's good. Really, really close. Uh, a different kind. And I was thinking about this last night when I was working on it a little bit. We've done a person, place, and now we're doing a thing. A person in Mike Iconelli and Steve, and Steve Kennedy. A place. a place. in Gunnersville, and yeah. now a thing. A thing. Yeah. Cool. So hopefully uh, we have we have two more that are in the works right now that we are in the very early stages, but we do. Uh, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, one is in the DFW area. Oh, you're still on that. I, train. I, yeah. In fact, I talked to him, and uh, as soon as the weather kind of settles down, we're going to try and go down before the classic. Before the classic. Yeah. You know the classic's in like six, seven, to eighteen, twenty days. <laughs> Keep going. You might as well add it. So a couple more act- days I on think there. It's actually in like twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> so plenty of time, man. Plenty what is the Bassmaster class? What is today? Is it the tw- <laughs> today is the twenty second? Oh, the twenty. Oh, yeah. We got so a lot like, of time. Yeah, there's like four weeks. Okay. So uh, we're gonna make that happen. But a very different kind of twenty feet deep that I would say we're gonna we're gonna launch in the next seven to ten days. So very excited about that. All right, today the show. We're going to have uh, a friend of BTL in the Bass Home for a long time. You're wrangling right a jersey here. up if right you're here. watching on uh, listening on iTunes. It yeah. is a uh, – boy, Vintage. that goes back to the days. That's a Mike McClellan jersey when he's still got yeah. the – Now, we're going to have him on live via Skype. And how many years ago is this? Do I, don't, think? I don't know because he's been through a couple of deals. I don't know if that's before or after all the – We'll ask him. All right. But it's interesting. It's got to be at least – Eight years, I would say. You think so? I think so. Maybe okay. six. Oh, Let's we'll say six to eight years. But it's interesting to see his core sponsors that were mm-hmm. on this jersey are still aligned with him. Yeah, for a the lot most of them part. are still, yeah. Now, obviously, Champion's not, but that's totally beyond his mm-hmm. control. But he is still under the umbrella, uh, running a ranger now of that whole, mm-hmm. you know, the way that the consolidation and buyout or whatever you want to call it went down so for the most part he's still dialed in man yeah do you realize that he's fished in 243 i told you this the other day dude i didn't even realize he was 50 
Yeah, well, he's had, had no he has idea. wins 21 years apart. <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't seem it's amazing how fast time, but you you talk about how many tournaments that is and then throw in all the other stuff that he's fished. He's I, been around decades. He looks great for 50. He really does. And and I don't think he really has a whole lot of health issues, so uh he is game to continue with this uh fine game we call professional fishing for for a number of years if he wants to i know they are traveling him and his wife stacy traveling all over the place yeah that's kind of their their deal now isn't it Do yeah they have they're, a they're trying home base they are or? getting ready to to settle down i i believe and if he wants to get into it we'll get into it i believe they are building a house on table rock oh that's convenient yeah with his winnings from table rock <laughs> So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into more of that. And then the other thing is we are going to talk about with Mike uh, a new business venture called TAG. It stands for Tournament Anglers Group, headed up by Kelly Power. And it is an incentive-based program of which you do not have to purchase any type of boat, motor, hmm. vehicle, Basically, you're else. banking on your own skill to make some coin on it. Yeah, you are investing in yourself. Yes, you're saying, and, and I think there's, it, yeah. there's three different tiers. I think two fifty, five hundred, and a thousand dollars. But whatever you buy in for, you get five times that if you win one of the sanctioned events. So, pretty interesting business model. Uh, obviously, you have that X component where you have to get to X number of memberships to at least break even. I mean, if I was doing the math here there's i mean depending on what ride and motor and everything you have let's say you you win a bfl that's a 100 boat bfl that's yeah. about probably the average when you say across all the divisions yeah uh you can do about about eight thousand dollars in incentives on top of the bfl win so we'll say about that pays about a four thousand dollar bfl well, under this program or with no, everybody? no no i'm just saying just think about this for the bfl it's a 350 fifty dollar entry fee yeah uh, this has nothing to do so with tag. Yeah, you're talking about uh, let's say four thousand for the win, eight thousand in incentives on a three hundred fifty dollar entry fee. So you're up to uh, there's uh, twelve grand, and then let's say you've got the the platinum tag. There's an additional five grand. You're up to seventeen grand for a BFL win if you're like maxed out incentive wise on an average. That's Pretty but impressive. how much do you have invested? Well, you've got the, if it'd be that, if you bought the platinum, it'd be a thousand for the tag. And then all the rest of the, I mean, depending on what, you know, whether you have power pole or mercury, you're probably talking another couple hundred bucks there plus three. So you got about a grand into it. Plus the fact that you had to buy all that product. Yeah. But I'm just saying you do win one and you pay <laughs> it off pretty darn quick for a $350 entry yeah. fee. Do you for- agree with the statement that I have made numerous times on the show about that when you take a, a BFL uh, or a, a a very large team tournament, at least here in Oklahoma, that 100% of the field truly believes that they can get a check. No. In the nickels, I think there's a lot of teams that just go out and have fun and hope that lightning strikes. So you're telling me that there is a percentage of the field that just goes out and plops down 300 bucks just for the hell of it. Absolutely. Camaraderie, totally, fun. They fish, totally they fish that with I their buddies for years. everybody that launches every morning at a Nichols event or a Skeeter event or a BFL event or whatever, they truly believe that they can go out and perform at a level to get a check. Oh, I, I, you, I think you start talking about individual and a seri- the more serious you get in it, but I think there's a lot of guys in those 350 boat tournaments that have fished them for the last 15 years. and they. But you're telling job. me they don't think that they have the confidence – to go out and get it shot? Not every time, no. no. So they're just here. They're just Absolutely. burning money up. Uh, it'd, it'd be like going to a bowling league. You don't think you're gonna. You don't think you're you're gonna win your bowling Dude, league, but I, it's fun and you camaraderie. Could go, you could go down to the Thursday night men's trio league at Sooner Lanes and ask every single person in that league, "Do you think that you have the ability to at least cash a check in this league?" Yeah. Well, you said expect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, of course, everyone would okay. think they'd like to be able to cash a so check. So here, but- I'm going to move on then. But only truly 10% of the field truly has a shot at winning that event. Sure. 
Do you agree with that? I mean, when well, it really if you look at the standings of who wins the, the big team tournaments around here in the BFLs, it seems to the same names seem to pop up quite a bit. There's a reason. All right, there is a reason, but it's the the, the fact of the matter of having that opportunity to truly believe that you're going to go out and get a check. That that's why. Well, you that's, know, that's what. Why, that, yeah, that's what, what would make the the tag work. Yeah, absolutely. Is that you're you're dangling the carrot? I would say not everyone. I would say yes. The majority of of anglers who are fishing at at that level in those yeah. believe that they have a shot, regardless of how legitimate that shot really is. All right. So uh, let's do this. Let's take a break. Dude, I'm tired. That was a late night last night. Mm -hmm. Very late night, but worth it, very though. worth staying up. Very, very cool stuff. All right, we're going to come back with Mike, McCle Mike McClellan live via Skype. Everybody stay tuned on a frozen, frozen Thursday here in Oklahoma. We'll be right back. The most versatile fishing machine on earth. Unparalleled resolution and clarity with more agility, lightning speed, and brute strength. HDS Carbon takes rapid response performance and screen technology to an all new level. Maximized power, maximized visibility. See Structure Scan 3D, new dual chirp sonar, new live network sonar, and more mapping options all at the same time and faster than ever before. on hydraulic jack plates to get the best out of their boats. Do what they do. Demand Atlas performance. Atlas gets you from the bottom to the top in less than eight seconds, even with the big four strokes. And when you gotta turn right around and get that heavy load back up in rough water, Atlas's innovative design and American-made components will get you there with confidence. I'm Ott Depot. Just look for yourself. There's an Atlas jack plate on just about every professional's boat. The Atlas hydraulic jack plate. You can depend on it. My rods look different because they are different. Every rod is built by the pros and for the pros. When you pick up a white ducket fishing rod, you're getting a cutting edge rod, one that's truly pro driven with the actions you need for every bait category you fish. I put my name on it. It's my promise to build you a great rod you can count on. Ducket fishing, micro magic, macro magic, or white ice. Try them, they work. What's up guys, Scott Martin here, Team Atco. Hey, if you want to have a chance to fish with me at a lake near you, well check out the link below. This could be a lot of fun, guys. The Lowrance Elite 7 Ti. Why does it lead the pack? It's simple, more bang for your buck. Use Elite 7 Ti with the all new Total Scan Transducer and you get all of your sonar from a single transducer install. That's broadband sounder, chirp sonar, side scan, and down scan imaging from one transducer. Now that's something to chirp about. Elite 7 Ti. Premium features have never been so affordable. I'm looking for signs before practice even starts. Crossing the bridge, I'm checking for current. Is the lake up or down? What's my water color? Bird activity tells me where the shad are before I ever launch my boat. <laughs> Sometimes the best things hit me right in the face. The pesky biffle bugs. There's always a hatch on your lake. Made in America by Jean LaRue Lures. Dang bug juice, it's everywhere. When I talk about Sunline, I think of one word, confidence. Sunline FX2 is what I use for all of my frogging and flipping. SX1 braid, which braid plays a big part in, uh, in fishing line. Shooter. I'm gonna use in those close quarter deals like flipping and pitching. One of my favorite techniques in fishing the tournament trail is to fish offshore ledges. We have taken the, the questions out of the equation. Take my word for it. It works. 
It works, dude. All right, we are back. Mark and Matt in a very warm studio. Dude, it is miserable outside. I want you to take a video of me <laughs> stick and puck in your driveway. When is the last time you've been on skates? Uh, I took the girlfriend to the rink down uh, in Oklahoma City in December. We had hot chocolate and went ice skating. <laughs> so romantic. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very classy. How long? Do you stay for the full session? The the, the two hours? No, session? we probably skated for about 30, 45 Did she minutes. Uh no. Did you hold her hand? Yes. <laughs> and the rest of her body to keep her from having any serious injuries. Dude, she's a obviously she's athletic, being yeah. a barrel racer, yeah. but No, the last time I skated hockey wise was uh a, a, about a year and a half ago. Did you go play pickup? No, I played When's the last time you played pickup? I played it no, I've not I've haven't probably eight years. But I played in the alumni game, not this past Thanksgiving, but the yeah. Thanksgiving before. Yeah. Oh, he's not doing well right now, are they? In the hockey? Yeah. They they done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they. Not not good. Not a great year for the Sooners club squad, but they'll be back strong. All right, we are ready to uh, go to our guest, and uh, we're going to ask him about that jersey. What year? There. Let's take a guess on a year. What's your hey, say? Let's see here. Twenty eleven. 2011? Yeah. I think it's uh, 2012. <laughs> All right. We'll ask him. Mike, you there, man? I'm here, man. Good to be here. Yeah. Thanks for taking time out. Uh, I know you're somewhere where it's warm. I don't know if you've heard or watched the news, but here in Oklahoma and the Midwest, dude, it sucks. That's the reason I'm somewhere down south. I just, I tell you what, I've I've been trying to get a house out of the ground through the course of the winter. I've lived in my RV through the, the worst of it, and we finally had enough. When it got to be about Valentine's Day, my wife's like, you've got to take me somewhere warm. And uh, so we packed the RV up and headed south. Um, we actually were in Nashville last week, uh, went to a Preds hockey game. Heard really? y'all talk a little hockey a while ago. So yeah. we... We didn't get to see the the night they won, but it was still a good game. Really, that's interesting. Who else? Who's a big Preds fan? There's someone else who's a big Preds fan in the fishing. I've no or not, idea. So not that you are, but it's a cool experience there, isn't it? Oh, it it is. I mean, ever since uh, my relationship with the boat factories uh, started taking me down to Murfreesboro, I guess that's been. 12, 13 years ago, I started going to Preds games about every opportunity I get in town. It's it's really pretty cool. I uh, Stacy loves it. I always try to catch up with some friends of mine down there and catch one. Very nice. nice. All right. Uh, first question out of the gate. Let me set this up for the iTunes people. Yeah. It is a Mike McClellan jersey that's been in the in the studio for a while, but it yeah. is the black uh, and orange. It is a sublimated jersey. It has the champion, the Falcon, the Mercury logos on it. Uh, let me see the front oh, there. Cool. Let me see the front there, what? so I can say, uh, oh, it's it's got uh, the Spro, the Gammy. It's got Zoom, Costa, Mustang. It's got a bunch of them. So we've yeah. got a gentleman's bet here, Mike, as to what year. What year was that? You know, I don't know if I can name the year specifically, but uh, it is definitely pre two thousand thirteen. I want to say, honestly, uh, that jersey would probably have to be 10 or 11. Is yes! I am a winner. Is that, I said 2011. I mean, yeah. But he's not positive, so I think we have to call that a draw. <laughs> no, it, it, here's the point I wanted to make about this, Mike, is let's yeah. just say it's 2011. The sponsors that are on this jersey, with the exception of Champion, and, and we'll get into that here in a minute, but, dude... You you are still with every single sponsor for the most part that's on this jersey. You know that's one thing that I will have to say that that I pride in in what I've done throughout the course of my career and uh, the sponsors that I've been associated with. I mean I've worked with a great bunch of people and honest to goodness in most situations when I have had to make a sponsor change it has been driven by another sponsor that I'm involved with. It, it hasn't necessarily been that I've just wanted to move 
or felt like there was a better opportunity, it really has been driven by a, a corporate buyout or something of that nature. So, uh, you know, it's cool to work with all the people uh, that I've got to work with. There's a couple differences there. Like you said, Champion, uh, that brand is no longer. Um, I've moved on with a different jig company now and uh, plastics. The big deal with plastics uh, and the relationship that I've got with Big Bite was the opportunity to develop plastics for Cabela's and brand them in the Cabela's branding. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, already a question on the instant feedback. Uh, let's see here. I think it's Matt in Tennessee wants to know, what can you say in regards to the situation that you dealt with, you know, going from Champion to Stratus and now with Ranger? Well, going back to what I said just a while ago, you know, there's been a lot of things changed in this industry over the past 12, 15 years due to the fact that we went through the uh, economic situation where everything got tied. I mean, manufacturers had to cut back and, and basically uh, pull back on some product lines. So when I went from the Champion brand to the Stratus brand, it was because they had decided to no longer continue with the Champion brand at that time. And basically the same things happened currently now, you know, White River Marine owns not only Stratus, Ranger, Triton, and Legend, so this year they made a decision that they were going to hold production of the Stratus line for 2018. I don't know exactly what that means. Maybe we'll see Stratus reemerge with some new hulls and things of that nature, but for the time being, they felt it was best due to Ranger's relationship with Cabela's for me to be running a Ranger. And, you know, this is pretty cool for me because I started my career in a Ranger back in the late 80s. Uh, the first boat I ever owned on Tournament Trail was a Ranger. And I ran a Ranger from 88 till 93 or 4. And it's pretty cool to get back in a Ranger, especially with it being my 50th birthday this past year. And it's Ranger's 50th anniversary. So, you know, it's the 50th classic coming up. I'm just hoping for a lot of good things here in the next uh, few weeks. Dude, you're looking solid for 50. You've really commented on his <laughs> physical appearance and health lately a lot more. Yeah, I, that's because I'm over 50. That, do you understand why? How old are why? you? Are you 54? I'm 55. Dude. You're 55. Yeah. Okay. I'm five years <laughs> older. I, I, know, I know what it's like to be 50, Matthew. Okay. <laughs> You look pretty good for 52, ah, Jeffrey. Ah, what, I'm 55, dude, but that's all right. No, seriously, uh, you don't have any serious injuries, at least that I'm unaware of. And you you act like, from a physicality and from a mental standpoint, Mike, that you could do this game for, for 15, 20, 25 more years if you want to. You know, in my plan, the grand scheme of things, I really feel like, another 10 or 12 years is what I would like to do just based on the way things are going in the industry right now you know if at that point in time I decide I want to continue and I'm having fun I'll do it I just don't want to be out here because I have to be out here 15 years from now you know I want to be enjoying it I want to thoroughly love what I do and as it stands right now I mean I'm at it my 20th year this year and I still love it just as much as I did the day I started I mean the competition aspect of what we go through event after event is unbelievable and just to see the competition level continue to rise it's pretty pretty incredible I mean you've got to stay on your toes to keep up with these young guns all right Brian and Philly wants to know uh what has been the effect on the Bass Pro Shops Cabela's merger on you and, and the sponsorship game for you as far as that arrangement? To me, it's really kind of uh, the best of both worlds. Um, you know, when I first uh, came on board with Cabela's a number of years ago, I had had a relationship with Bass Pro working the spring fishing fairs and had developed a big fan base, you know, throughout the course of that. And due to this merger, it really allows Bass Pro and Cabela's to utilize me as an angler even more so than they were before. You know, I can go work a Cabela's uh, open house. I can go work a Bass Pro open house. It gives me more opportunities in, as an angler to continue to, to promote my sponsors throughout both of the big box stores. So it's a win-win for me. Um, as far as what's going on within the organizations, I mean, there's been a great amount of communication as far as what we're doing. I mean, you know, you see myself and Creed and a few of the other guys that were Cabela's anglers, we're now carrying the Bass Pro Shops logo on our boat wraps, our jersey wraps, our truck wraps. And to me, um, I mean, it says nothing more than the fact that Johnny Morris has just, I mean, he's got such an 
awesome you know situation now to um just take this you know the whole industry to the next level i mean he can absolutely you know get to about anybody he wants to the unique thing about it though is the customer bases at bass pro and cabela's are relatively different so i really believe we are going to see cabela's and bass pro remain somewhat the same as far as the brands go all right i don't know about i guess this is a legit question but i mean now you've got both of them and guys do all these custom yeah, they do like bass pro shops exclusive colors and stuff like that i mean you happen to just know a little bit about the crankbait game and have developed this stuff are we going to see like bass pro exclusive colored rock crawlers and all that stuff that 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 come from you in the near future what's the deal going on with that you know it's really funny you bring that up because as we said here today there should be four exclusive bass pro spro rock crawlers being shipped uh, any day now i know that they have they've they've hit here in the united states i don't know if they've actually made it to the stores yet but some really really unique uh, colors for uh, the rock crawler especially i mean you know most of the stuff we have in the rock crawlers i mean they're they're pretty standard you know colors we're looking at uh, watermelon craw and uh, molten craw here but uh, the colors that Bass Pro actually wanted me to work on and the, the colors they brought to us are really unique for the rock crawler. So I'm I'm pretty excited about it. And those colors will only be available at Bass Pro. I, I honestly did not know <laughs> we that, had Mark. No idea. I, I swear I had no idea. That was, folks, that was not a setup. Hey, let's throw him a Spro softball <laughs> no, question. I, I no was idea. just asking. That's why I was almost afraid to ask it. I saw the surprise in your eyes when I said it was really coming. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. All right. Hey, on the instant feedback, your nephew, Kyle, wants to know, when are you going to take him fishing? <laughs> Whenever I have a home a home where I can call uh, Arkansas or Missouri home again. I, I know everybody doesn't know, but we recently sold our home. I say recently, last August there in Arkansas. And we have been living in our RV full time ever since then. And I really haven't spent any time in one place for very long. But tell Kyle, uh, as soon as we get back in uh, Missouri or Arkansas, he's welcome to jump in the boat with me. Where's all your stuff? Where's all my stuff? I mean, you have to have... I mean, we did an in-the-house with you back there at your old house. I mean, you've got a lot of stuff. Where are all the cases of, of original wiggle warts from the 80s? Where is all the all the falcon rods being stored? You wouldn't believe it. Now, when it came to the sentimental stuff and, and things that, uh, you know, I didn't want to let go of, uh, we didn't let it all go, but we actually had one of those estate sales when we sold the house. We actually sold the house and had two weeks between events to get home and either pack up or sell it so we basically hired one of those companies that comes in anything that wasn't sentimental anything that wasn't you know pictures of my wife and my kids it got sold i mean i kept a lot of the sentimental tackle but we really were down to our rv i've got a pod i think it's a eight or ten by sixteen pod and that is all the possessions we have in this world right now where are the blue trophies? Well, I've got those uh, stored at uh, various relatives' houses. My aunt uh, <laughs> was kind enough to let me uh, set a few of them up at her house there in Blue Eye, Missouri, which is going to be our new home shortly. And then my mother-in-law actually wanted to uh, display a couple of the ones um, from the events that she had attended. So they're, they're split up right now. I could just see, like, <laughs> Vern from Beaver Lake walking her out, toting her out to Blue Trophy that he picked up at an estate sale because he got there early. <laughs> I can just see the trophies or any other trophies or packs I've acquired. Wow! All right, now back to the instant feedback real quick, and then uh, we've got a ton of stuff to get into and not a whole lot of time. But uh, Kobe, is it Asbury? Do you know who that is from Lake of the exactly. Ozarks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to know, when can he start throwing the RK-55 MD at Lake of the Ozarks? You know, the whole thing to me about the RK series as a whole is it's not about what the water temperature is. I just actually did a radio interview with uh, another radio station last night. It's not about how cold the water is. It's about what the water temperature is doing. I mean, if it's 42 or 3 degrees and we get a week of warm weather, some good runoff, those fish start moving shallow, and that's when I'm going to pick up an RK 55 MD. I mean, anytime the water starts warming, you can count on catching them. When you get into those situations where it's it's cold, it's just stable. That's when a McStick is more more my preference. But uh, when that water temperature starts rising, is when you need to pick that thing up and start grinding. All right. 
the RK fifty five MD. <laughs> you know, speaking of speaking of the uh, rock crawlers, um, I mean everybody's aware of the the MD, which is the one I've got here in my left hand, and then the uh, original RK fifty five. I'm working on my next version, which, uh, as you can see, it's a uh, it's a little bite sized morsel, a um, little bit more old school as far as the size, but uh, you know, we as uh, anglers, we don't just get to fish tournament to tournament. I mean, I'm spending time uh, down here in the south right now. I'm taking advantage of some cleaner water in different situations to to throw not only this bait, but I'm working on a new new bait that uh, Big Bite's working on right now. So it's one of those deals, even when we're not fishing tournaments, we're staying pretty busy. And I mean, that's what it's all about to uh, keep things rolling in this industry hey, today. Can you pull one of those soft baits that you're working on out, or is that against the rules? It's, it's kind of... Oh, you got I, one out. I can, you know, maybe hold it like that and just kind of let y'all know that it is a plastic worm, and uh, we're working on some new designs with some actions and, and the tail, so we'll see where it goes from there, but that's about all I can show you right now. He's got the tail in his hand, and he hid the bill of the bait for yes. the iTunes viewers. Just, that's all right. The, the, just a little tease, I guess. All right. Uh, we're gonna, Mike, we're going to talk about one more business item, and then we're going to get into fishing here, but uh, I want to talk about this new organization new venture that's been formed called tag the tournament tournament anglers group of which it is an incentive based business program whatever you want to call it designed for anglers that participate in specific tournament trails of which depending on what level that they buy in at they can actually win money without having to buy a boat a motor a rod or anything like that what what can you talk about <laughs> You know, the thing about it is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very well acquainted with the gentlemen that are behind this, and uh, I, I'm not an owner at this point in time. I mean, it's something that I've thought about wanting to get involved with, but the more I think about it, it's one of those situations where, as an angler, I look back throughout the course of my career, and so many of the incentive programs that uh, I have qualified for, I had to you know have a boat of a certain year make or model I had to have a vehicle of a certain year or model and the thing that is so cool about the tag organization is it doesn't matter if you even own a boat or a truck if you're a co-angler and you're fishing a BFL event and you've got enough confidence in yourself to buy in at that premium level you could win an additional five grand if your tournament sanctioned that you're fishing so you know to me it's all about I mean, the way I look at it, anglers, for the most part, we're just high-stakes gamblers. I mean, and I say high-stakes. When you start talking Elite Series and FLW, we are high-stakes. But when you start talking about BFL anglers and Weekend Series anglers and guys that fish Nichols Marine and all the events there in the, the four states and across the United States, we gamble on ourselves all the time. And when you have the opportunity with unlimited numbers of times that you can win, to pay whatever level you want to pay in at and have a chance to win some extra money that's that's what it's all about to me that's the confidence in yourself that you're going to go out and win i know if i went back a couple of times in my career and i would have been a part of this i'd have put an extra 25 30 35 thousand dollars in my pocket so to me, it's a pretty big deal you know, right. notice notice this program didn't come out until after jason christie stopped fishing bfls <laughs> <laughs> good, just just good pointing point. that out. Good point. Just pointing that out. But there are some guys out there doing the same kind of thing right now. You know, the other thing that's cool about this organization and the guys that are putting it together is it isn't all about, and, and you know, anything we do to start a business, it's about trying to make a profit. But knowing the guys that are doing this, the big thing I see is they want to create an angler organization that truly benefits the anglers in the group. Um, you know, we're talking about a lot of various things, and I can't elaborate on a whole lot of it, but, you know, we're looking at the ideas of having, you know, discount programs for anglers and, and various things that will come along down the road as we grow this membership. And I know with the tournaments that are getting ready to kick off there in the four states this weekend, there's a lot of money on the line for anglers that might be watching today just you know pick take the time get on your device and and check tag out because i mean there's a lot of extra money to be won um, Nichols marine i think has an event coming up anglers in action uh, there's a lot of events uh there locally that guys could win an extra five grand this weekend all right so if you want to know more information about that go to tagfishing.us 
and uh, they did a really good job at explaining how the program works. And it's and like what an the about laws are. tab and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it took me like two minutes to understand it, so that's saying something. <laughs> I want that one, Matt. Have you bought in yet, buddy? Because you're you're out. Are you fishing any yet this year? Uh, I am. I am fishing uh, a number of those events. Um, okay. But I don't know if I believe in myself at that level, Mike. I'm going to just be honest with you here. Jeez. Okay, I'm going to rub it in. I'm going to rub it in the first time you win, and you missed your opportunity to win. You know, I'm, I five. might have to get in. I'm not ready to sit down at like the five ten no limit table yet, but I might be able to get in at like the one two no limit table just well, to just see, to get a piece of it. You've got that option. You can buy it at the. The two hundred and fifty or five hundred dollar level. Jump on in there. <laughs> All right, David in Wisconsin wants to know how many boxes, tackle boxes of wiggle warts do you have? You know, in all honesty, I mean, at one point in time in my career, I was sponsored by by Storm, and I had acquired a fairly good stock of them. But through the years of them discontinuing the old originals, I mean, you, you know, I lost them. I uh, gave them to buddies. And, uh, you know, I may have one or two 3,700 uh, Planos that still have old original wiggle warts in them, but uh, it's not like I've got 500 or 1,000 of them like a lot of people might think. Yeah, Dude, he's got the rock crawler. He doesn't need well, the wiggle wart anymore. Dude, that's what I said when they came out with the two. rock crawler. I called Wire Mike two. and I said, dude, now you've got the rock crawler. You don't need the wiggle wart. I will let me be a friend and take those off your hands for you so you can have more storage. Mike, you can make a ton of money selling those on eBay, man. Well, and, you know, I've actually had some people hit me up that know that I've got those. And in all honesty, I'm thinking about getting rid of them because the value of them has got to continue to decrease with the fact that the rock crawler has (laughs) become. You can't say that with a straight face. Look, That's a great point there. All right. uh, (laughs) Let's get into a little bit about your performance on the Elite Series, Mike. Uh, We're going to talk about 2017, and then uh, a lot of people on the Instant Feedback want to talk about the Sabine River stop, about the run to Houston and and all of that. So first of all, dude, I've known you for a number of years. The last year, the last few events have not been vintage Mike McClellan performances. And, and we had Terry Scroggins on Tuesday, and I told him. I said, dude, I know I'm going to ask this, and I know what the answer is. If you knew what the answer was, you would fix it. But most of the time throughout your career, you've been able to, to battle back from what Terry called cycles. And it seems like the cycle right now that you're going through, Mike, is very, very challenging. What do you do to try to bust out of it? You know, you've just got to spend more time on the water. And I'll be honest, that's been one of my downfalls the last couple of years is, you know, getting to the point in life where we knew we were ready to sell the house and and starting to, to plan for our, you know, ultimate future has really taken Stacy and I off the water. I mean, I, I know that, you know, back when we first, uh, the Elite Series first kicked off, I mean, so often when you would shout at me, it'd be like, you know, where are you at? And it'd be, you know, Stacy and I were off fishing somewhere. Yeah. And uh, honestly, I just haven't got to spend the time on the water the last couple of years like I had in the past. Um, some of that sponsor obligation. Some of it's just simply the fact that, uh, you know, you, you reach points in life where you've got things that you've got to take care of. And, uh, you know, our boys are at that age now where one of them's married, uh, the middle one's, you know, working uh, in the construction industry and my oldest is actually you know uh, just got out of college just recently took a job with a, a rep company and then the youngest is you know just getting started in college so uh, it's a little bit of a battle and I think we as not just anglers but we as people go through those times where our focus isn't a hundred percent on what it needs to be and uh, I think we've got those things kind of put behind us now we've got a new house on the way and uh, we're ready to get back at it and catch them. You know, you, you can't just really throw me under the bus. I I did pull off a win at Table Rock last year. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that, I was going to say that was 11 tournaments ago, Mark. Cut the guy some slack. I know. Slack. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it, like I said, it is not vintage Mike McClellan performance, uh, especially on the Elite Series. And, well, and, I, and I will admit that. And the, the other thing I've got to say there, and I mentioned it earlier, I mean, the the competition level just continues to rise and rise every year. And if you're not spending time on the water every week to stay up with the new trends, the new fads, you can get behind in a hurry. 
All right, uh, back to the instant feedback real quick. Uh, Mark in Minnesota wants to know, how do you think the Rock, Claw- Rock Crawler and the McStick will play at the Classic this year? You know, that's going to depend on what this weather system does. You know, fortunately for me, I like to see the cold continue to push through the Midwest, and I hope it's pushing far enough over there in the east. Um, two years ago or three years ago when we were there at Hartwell last, it was, excuse me, brutally cold. And uh, the McStick played. The rock crawler hadn't come into the, the lineup yet. But uh, as long as it will stay cold, um, I definitely think a rock crawler and a McStick can be a player. You know, there's a lot of things that can happen over there. And the biggest thing I don't want to see is for it to warm up and those fish rush the bank and uh, start trying to be on beds like they were last year when we were at Houston. They were actually bedding uh, on Hartwell that time of the year. So uh, it's it's one of those situations where I want it to stay cold. You've had – three top 10 finishes in the classic two top five finishes in the classic i remember you, you were in the hot seat for a while in in one of the classics is there anything like the feeling of being in contention in the Bassmaster classic especially you know you throw in throw in a lot of the stuff that that you've designed that's got your name on it knowing what takes you've got the open wins you've got the elite series wins is that the ultimate is that kind of what is pushing you now at this point in your career is that classic there's no denying that you know classic or aoy title either one and and there's no denying the aoy title is the most coveted the hardest title to win and and that's one of those titles that uh, you you can't have a, a mess up and and i feel like even with my start this year i'm not out of the hunt for aoy you look at brandon last year started in the 90s and and wins angler of the year so i mean i'm not saying that that isn't still something that's uh, attainable but uh sitting there in the hot seat you know at at the last classic i mean i had a pretty good idea when i sat there at grand in the hot seat that there were going to be a couple guys that were going to you know kick me out of it but uh the couple of other top 10 finishes i've had there was actually that thought in the back of my mind that i might have had enough you know the one that skeet won on the red river um you know i had a mental breakdown the first day i actually uh, thought i had nearly 15 pounds in the live well and uh, left my primary area at nine o'clock the first day of the classic and uh as i pulled them out of the live well late in the day and realized i only had like 12 and a half it was pretty disheartening due to the fact that you know the next two days i had you know like 18 and 21 pounds you know i lost that classic by just a little bit um so, yeah, I mean, winning a Classic is the ultimate goal at this point in time in my career. All right. I did receive a question from somebody, longtime viewer, listener, uh, was unable to watch the live show today. Brian in California wanted to know, are you going to be able to go to Houston for the Sabine River event? And will you let Crete and Littner <laughs> join you? And what if other guys show up, what are you going to do? You know the whole thing about it, and I got to put this put this straight because Crete was actually the one that got the first tidbit of information that there might be some bass to be caught over there. So you know, there's no, it's not even about will I let. Um, Crete's got every right to be there. You know, he was the one that said, "Hey, a buddy of mine says that some bass live over here around Houston," and we went over and explored it and found them. Um, you know. There's going to be guys over there this year. There's no denying it that there may be 20 or 30 of us end up over in the Houston area this year. There's really a lot more water over there to fish than probably any of us actually recognize at this point in time. And, uh, you know, when you run over there and you've only got two, two and a half hours to fish it's really hard to do much damage to the area i mean you've got to dial an area and go over there and catch what you can catch and make the run back so um you know i'm facing it right now i'm gonna have company and it's just one of those situations that uh you know everywhere we've gone throughout the course of time once we go back time after time guys are going to end up where tournaments have or where anglers have had success and uh that's just part of it um i'm going to tell you though straight up you've got to have a pretty solid mindset to run two and a half hours fuel up and know that you've only got an hour and a half two hours to catch what you can catch and then get back he says solid mindset in in layman's terms that's you gotta have a big set of balls (laughs) that's what he that's what he (laughs) wanted to say you could say that on this show mike uh, you can say that on this show. Well, that's that's what it amounts to. You got to have a big set of companies. All right. Uh, back to the instant feedback. David in Wisconsin 
wants to know if you have a favorite victory through your career. You know, they're all special, but in all honesty, I mean, the, the two Table Rock victories, the, the Elite in 14 and the the uh, Open last year, uh, are probably two of my favorite. You know, when you fish a lake that you somewhat want to call your home lake, um, you know, there's always that, that home lake uh, hang-up, and uh, to be able to win not only an Elite, but an Open there on Table Rock, that, those are big to me, and now the fact that I'm actually getting ready to build a house you know, up on the hillside uh, where I won the tournament uh, last year, it means a lot. You know, I, I cut my teeth fishing in that area, and it's just an area I love to spend time in. All right. Danny Martin wants to know, uh, on Table Rock, are there any new hot colors that he should be aware of? <laughs> Oh, I mean, you know, like I said a while ago, the uh, Bass Pro exclusive <laughs> colors are definitely going to be um, colors that you want to be throwing at Table Rock. The uh, colors we introduced last year, the uh, Missouri Craw and the PB&J, I mean, those are big Table Rock colors as well. You just serve it up softball hey, after it's, softball, It's what Jeffries. they want to know on this the instant so, feedback. These are softballs, I, I am man. not making them up. It's what the fans want to hear. Okay. All right. All right. Jeremy in Illinois wants to know, can you talk about the new jig company? You know, right now we're uh, just working through some of the details there. Um, there's a, you know, there's a lot of good jigs on the market, and uh, you know, there's a lot of new jig companies that have kind of popped up here in the last few years. And uh, I actually had the opportunity. I developed a hook for a Gamakatsu a couple years ago that uh, I want to incorporate into a jig. And uh, the company I'm talking to right now is thinking about letting me do that. So that's going to be the key is uh, working with a company that will allow me to put this hook that I've uh, worked with Gami to design uh, in a jig. And we'll move forward from there. Is your, Hopefully, I, by iCast. Hopefully by iCast we'll, uh, we'll have that nailed down. I think it's your face is on the cover of that new hook, isn't it? Um, well, that's part of it. I mean, that uh, the the new hook that you're talking about is actually a new worm hook I designed in the G Finesse series for uh, Gamakatsu. But we've actually got another hook that we worked on uh, even a year before that one that's specifically designed to pour in jigs. You know, it's oh, got, okay, the, got the the jig bend in it mm -hmm. and everything of that nature. All right, Kevin in Illinois wants to know, do you ever modify the paint scheme on your baits? In all honesty, other than the fact that I've got a painter locally that uh, paints me baits from time to time that, you know, I want to introduce as new colors, I really throw most everything straight out of the package. I mean, you know, when we start developing new colors for the, the next year or the year after, I'm throwing colors ahead of anglers, but in all honesty, uh, every color I throw is pretty much dead on to what you can buy as a consumer out of the package. Who, and you don't have to answer this, Mike, you just go, ah, I don't want to go down that path, but <laughs> in your mind, who is the best custom painter in the Ozarks area? Um, there's number six. You know, there's so many Ozarks. great in the Ozarks. I mean, I Seven. couldn't name just one. I mean, you've got... Uh, I don't know, six or eight uh, custom painters there in the Ozarks. I mean, you know, in all honesty, you got to give a shout out to Timmy Hughes because he's the one that really got the ball rolling. I mean, when it comes to custom painted baits, whether it was, you know, the old wiggle warts or old stick baits, Timmy Hughes was the one that got it going. But, uh, you know, my painter actually just does it as a hobby, and he would absolutely kill me if I even mentioned his name. I mean, he's like, I don't want people to know I paint baits. So, uh, you know, it's one of those deals that uh, I pretty well rely on him uh, to paint about everything for me, or I'm throwing him straight out of the package. I mean, I feel like Spro's got a, a phenomenal color line up across the board whether we're talking rock crawlers or mixed sticks there's no sense in spending an extra 12 15 bucks a bait to get them painted what is that is, your it, painter yeah, calling you right now either that or is it creek <laughs> is creek calling you <laughs> no it's actually a sid from spro calling me oh. No. Okay, he's going, you should have said anything about those four colors. You're so <laughs> in trouble or uh, I've, I've showed too much of the new bait. I don't know what's going on, but something's up. Uh -oh. Dude, I got a question, and Jeffries has been feeding you softballs all, all, all show. Uh, I, I have not. I, so m m you're a likable guy. Right, I mean, uh, most uh, I've never heard anyone say a cross word about you. But we we're talking, and Jeffries and I before you came on, we we're talking about the fierce rivalry between Canada and the United States. Have you, in your twenty years, ever had a a rival 
in the have you ever gotten into it on the water have you ever had a rivalry with anybody in all your 20 years or do you just kind of get along with everybody you know i mean i figured out a long time ago and you know those 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 same about honey and bees and all of that i mean in my opinion it just works out a lot better to get along with everybody i mean i've never tried to pull up on a spot other than maybe biffle and not felt like i could fish an area with complete you know never even think twice about it but uh you know i think uh, those situations have just arose over the years you know i mean the area that i was talking about the first day of the classic the year skeet won i mean kevin came in the second day and he just basically packed up and left knowing you know that i'd caught him in there the first day and he wasn't in there the first day so um you know i feel like um, that that old saying about uh, you can get more honey or bees with honey uh goes a long ways it's these guys that are, are always under somebody's skin that can really create some controversy out there i mean i love biffle to death but i mean you can't show up somewhere without him trying to run you out <laughs> wow hey uh, uh our good friend dave uh dave rush in south carolina we we got into a discussion mike on Tuesday about the big collapse that the University of Oklahoma basketball program has been They've lost going like through. nine out of the last ten. This uh, is NCAA college basketball. Yeah, they were number four in the nation. Now they may not even get into the tournament. So and, they've like really sucked it up even worse than the Razorbacks. Oh, it, yes. I mean, it, okay. it's just been a horrible, horrible collapse. Well, anyway, we asked a lot of our viewers if, if they could identify one of the biggest collapses – in professional fishing, both over on the elite side. Can we say most surprising collapses or shocking? Yeah. Yeah, what did I say? Biggest. Uh, never mind. Continue. Okay. I, I just so, hope hey, I'm not part of this collapse. Hey, no, you're no, on no, the, no, no, the no. good side. The, the overwhelming response that we got from the fans and on the instant feedback was the collapse of Brian Snowden in Florida. You know, and that's man, that is such a tough one. You know, and and I and I know that still has got to eat at Brian Snowden, but uh, you know, I, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I was as I, I honestly that was one win that it was hard for me to enjoy as it happened. I mean, I've enjoyed the money since then, and it was <laughs> nice deposit in the check, but it hard for me to enjoy that win when it happened because I mean you know Brian and I's history goes back a long ways I mean I had him in the boat with me when he was a co-angler fishing pro-am 20 years 25 years ago so uh you know to see him have that opportunity and to see that slip away from him um that was rough for me I mean and, and I know it was rougher for him so um it, it just it happens every now and then and uh there's just things that you as an angler sometimes can't control when when it's meant to be and you're going to win, it's like you can't do anything wrong. But when uh, when it's not meant to be, it just falls apart sometimes. All right. Are you with Motor Guide, Mike? Yes, I am. All right. I know there was a lot of statistical data that came out about the number of guys that were using the competitors compared to Motor Guide. And uh, a couple of people on the instant feedback want to know, can you elaborate on anything from a – technology standpoint that motor guide might be coming out with that could be comparable to what the competition is doing well the whole thing is is um you know in this day and age of technology and the things that uh, companies are doing whether it be you know uh electronics companies or you know outboard companies i mean mercury's just released the the new four stroke i mean everything is changing and i mean i can't sit here and deny the fact that mercury isn't working on stuff but as far as the actual technology i can't tell you what it is going to be for sure you know i mean we all have to remember that uh motor guide actually purchased a uh, pinpoint years ago so they actually have some of that technology that was developed a long time ago that uh, could definitely be incorporated <coughs> into those motors in the near future you know we uh motor guides innovative and uh you know i really have had such a good relationship with mercury and motor guide throughout the course of my career the motors are solid um i just felt like at this point in time in my career i needed to stay put where i'm at all right when's the last time you caught him on a football jig man 
You know, I, I was thinking that the other day when I unloaded my football jigs uh, after Lake Martin, thinking, man, when have I actually caught them good on a football jig? You know, a couple times around the house, I've got to go out and catch them. But it, it really has been in a tournament environment situation. It's probably been uh, six, eight years since we've had a good football jig tournament. That is Fish crazy. and chips? Fish and chips with Justin? Um, you know, that wasn't a football jig no. deal, bad as I hate to say. You're just trying to pry for information. No, now. Justin <laughs> lied to me then. <laughs> that sucker. Wow. We're going way back to hey, 2012. Uh, when, when you do get settled in, when, when is the expected date where hopefully you'll be settled in at Table Rock? You know, I'm hoping somewhere in the uh, late May or June time frame, about that time that we come off of the road, you know, for our first little summer break to go to ICAST and all of that. Uh, it's just one of those situations. I mean, I've got a great contractor working for me. The biggest thing is everybody's just so busy right now. It took me, I think it took me 60 or more days to get an excavator uh, on site to, you know, start leveling and, and clearing trees. But uh I'm looking forward to getting settled in, but at this point in time, I'm not in a big rush. You know, a lot of people, when they're building a house, they stress out because they've got that deadline date that they're trying to get in something by. And to me, I'm going to be on the road until July, really, anyway. Late June, early July, so it really doesn't matter if it's... As long as I've got somewhere to go by then, I'll be happy. So what's the best thing about traveling and living in an RV? You know, the coolest thing about it is you can just either stay or go whenever you want i mean you know the beauty of it is if the weather's getting bad and in the ozarks i can hook onto it and take off um if i get done at an event and the fishing's good i can just hang out for a few more days and fish so you know for stacy and i it's been pretty cool to not get in a hurry you know when you're staying in a hotel or a resort it's like you know when the tournament ends you've got to check out and move on um with an rv generally you can just hang out and uh Take your time. Like I said, we hung out in Nashville last week after uh, the Lake Martin event. I had to work a, a promotion for uh, Ranger and Mercury at Renegade Marine, and uh, it was one of those situations. We took a few days off, um, got some stuff reorganized, and uh, now we're down south just kind of enjoying a, a week or two off. How much square footage do you have, Mike? <laughs> Say that again. I'm How sorry. much square footage? You know, I've never got the actual square footage but I, I mean i'm not gonna lie about it i'll stand up and just give you kind of a preview of uh what we're looking at here you know we've got uh, we've got a 43 foot rv with five slides so we definitely have room this is, up here, this is the raised rear den or living area so you, you know big screen tv couple recliners and couches um as you can see behind me we've got you know residential refrigerator wow. i mean it's you make your way up into the uh, the uh, front living or the front bedroom area. I mean, I can't complain a bit about it. You know, I would have never believed that from my early days of camping in a pop-up or even a tent that I would ever be living in an RV this size, you know, to as and actually call it home. <laughs> you guys go for I mean, you it's not it's not a train, is it? You got Stacy driving one of them. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, um, you know, I'm still pulling the boat with the Toyota Tundra, and uh, we bought a big 3,500 Ram uh, dual wheelbase truck to pull the RV, RV with, and, uh, you know, I keep telling her the, the RV pulls just as good as the boat behind that big truck, and uh, she still would rather pull the boat around, so no, I drive the RV or the Ram with the RV behind it, and she pulls the boat with the Tundra. And that's the trendy thing to do now, Yeah. you know, with it, Paul it, and Nick and Lucas and how, I mean, there's a number of guys that do, they, they caravan. You yeah. know, I really think that we're up to the point now where there's 35 or 6 of the Elite Series anglers that are pretty much uh, camping or RVing it at all the events. I mean, it, it's really, after you've after you've stayed in motels the number of years that I have, and, and some of them aren't the nicest when you get into these fishing communities, it's pleasant to be able to come home and crawl into your own sheets and your own stuff every night and not deal with what you deal with on the road. Yeah. Is there? I wonder if there's a business there for a guy like me. Basically, you go in, you pick up their trailer, you take it to the tournament, you get it all set up for You're them. You're kind of like the caddy. Yeah, then then they can have their family drive with them, and then everything's set up when they're there. You do that for five or six different guys per tournament. You get them all set up, the water, the sewage hooked up, and they roll in, their RV's set up. You don't have to worry about the four. You don't have to worry about the wife towing it, just a small, a super small <laughs> fee for that, and everybody's happy. 
you know, there are actually some of the anglers, and, and we have, we've all run into it in certain situations where, you know, we have to go somewhere else for a promotion or something like that. And, and there is a, an avenue that uh, guys are doing just what you're talking about, Matt. I mean, uh, there's an event this year that I'm really struggling with trying to figure out how I'm going to work around some obligations. And uh, you may uh, have a job if you want one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, that, that's all personal interest there. Strictly personal. Yes. All right, Mike. Uh, a couple more questions, man, and then we'll let you go. It's been uh, it's been a great day here on BTL having you on. Uh, several people on the instant feedback here. When you when you do have time, would yeah. you would you fish a team tournament with Justin on Grand Lake? Well, this year I absolutely can't because of the no information rule. I mean, after, after. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, that's one thing that I have missed throughout the course of my career is the opportunity to fish team tournaments with, you know, not just Justin, but my other two boys. Um, You know, Justin has always fished enough events there regionally that if I do come home and have time, generally we can't fish together because he's trying to qualify for a year in championship or something of that nature. Um, we have fished fish and chips together. We've maybe fished a couple of other little jackpots together. And uh, I absolutely love to spend time in a boat with him. And in all honesty, I kind of stand behind him and I'm fishing in awe a lot of times. I mean, the kid is unbelievable when it comes to mechanics and just the way he thinks through the process of of what he's doing and uh you know i learn a lot Uh, every time me as an angler has the chance to get in the boat with somebody else it it means something you know and uh, that's one thing that a lot of people may not realize i mean uh swindle and and myself we kind of our wives like to hang out together and we've kind of started running together on the road the last couple years pulling these rvs around and uh, we got in a boat together a, a number of times last year. And it's unbelievable what you can learn about you as an angler when you have that opportunity to get in a boat with somebody that's uh, thinking through things in a different manner. So, yeah, I love to get in a boat with not just my son, but uh, anybody I can get in a boat with and go fish a team right. tournament. Very cool, man. Are you going to have a separate building at your new house for your tackle and your boat? Well, you know, honestly, we are kind of going uh, the reasonable way. We're building, a, the house we're building is going to be primarily a metal construction. We're going to dress it up a little bit with some, you know, rock and wood columns and stuff like that. But we're basically building a, a barn dominium or, you know, a number of people are calling them a lot of different things, a shop house. or uh, Basically, we've got a, a shop that will house the boat and truck as well as the RV. Uh, so we have a big shop. And then our living quarters has really been sized down a bunch. You know, you get all three of the boys out of the house and you realize pretty quick you don't need all of that space. So we're going to be, you know, probably under 2,500 square foot. And we probably wouldn't even be there, but the hillside just worked out well enough that it was pretty reasonable to put a basement under so i'm going to have a man cave to display the blue trophies and all the other plaques that i've acquired through the years and then we'll have about uh, 1800 square foot of living upstairs and that'll be where we uh you know have the uh, main part of life going all right very cool matt anything yeah my else? last question he talked about the plaques we started the show off by talking about the the silver medalist who took the medal off and didn't want to have it have you ever had a second place trophy where just super bummed that you didn't win and just chucked the trophy in the lake as you <laughs> headed out of town? No, I really haven't. You know, it's and, and, and as hard as that is for you to believe, I've never finished second. I finished third a time. No, I take that back. I did finish second, uh, I think, one time at Ross Barnett. But I've got a lot of, uh, you know, top tens that I just really wasn't in position to win. But uh, even the one at Ross Barnett that I finished second in, um, I was proud to have that second place trophy. I mean, that's a that's a hell of a lot better than a, a 51st or, a, you know, one place out of the money like I got uh, a week or two ago at Martin, I promise you. says you've got four, but they're obviously not that. You finished second <laughs> at the Sabine. Yeah, that, this is true. I, I've lost track of some seconds. I, <laughs> You've got twice as many wins as seconds, but I was hoping there'd be a good story there where you just like you drop, know, really, drop, kicked a trophy into the pond and said peace. No, you know, I mean, the way I look at it, I mean, it, it's just you, you gotta, you gotta love every day that you get the opportunity to to do what I do. I feel very blessed to uh, have been fishing now for twenty years. Um, 
I would have never dreamed it, you know, when I was 18 or 20. I knew I wanted to do it, but to actually be able to say I've made a living doing this for the last 20 year, years of my life has been pretty cool. How's a poker game? You know, I still play when I get the chance. I mean, I wish you'd get uh, fish and chips back up and but uh, it's one of those deals. I mean, I'm competitive, and if I'm not uh, able to fish like this winter when it was uh, below 30 and below 15 for like a month, I played some poker this fall or this winter. So it's just part of life. Can't you just take that RV and like set it up at Tunica? <laughs> Dude, you would be shocked. You can set an RV up at about any casino across the country and pretty dadgum reasonable. In fact, a lot of them will let you stay there free as long as you're gambling. So uh, we have uh, made our way through, um, you know, the casinos there locally, downstream, and uh, oh, what's the other one there just to the north of Grand now? Um, you know, it's another casino that's got an RV park. Yeah, and, Cherokee. Uh, Cherokee. Yeah, Cherokee. Uh, you know, there's a few there that uh, it's pretty amazing how reasonably you can stay at an RV park. Some of them have free laundry, and that really works out good. Very nice. All right, Mike, man, thank you so much for taking time. Uh, we spent, shoot, almost an hour with him, yeah. Matt. Well, he's got nowhere to be. He just <laughs> travels around and hangs out in the RV all day. So That's cool stuff. Uh, with a great Wi-Fi signal. Yeah, it's like I said, though. I mean, I'm actually working this week. I'm, I'm testing some new baits, and, uh, you know, I'm trying to get this body of mine back acclimated to, to fishing. Um, this winter, I normally fish a lot in the wintertime, and, and this winter it was just so brutal there in the Ozarks that it just was – I even went to the lake one day to fish, not even thinking about it. When I got to the lake, it was froze. I mean, I'm like, what was I even thinking? Wow. You know, I was actually going to one of those small lakes there in northwest Arkansas, and when I got there, it was froze solid. So that goes to show how cold it actually did get around home this year. Wow. All right, Mike. Best of luck to you. I will be in touch very soon, and uh, tell Stacy we said hello. I'll do it, and don't forget, I mean, anybody listening to this that's getting ready to fish a weekend derby this week in the Ozarks, you better check Tag out. All right, there you have it tagfishing.us Mike, be careful, be safe we'll talk to you soon, man I'm out, gentlemen All right. I uh, I think with that last statement, he uh, hit the over-under number <laughs> on the number of times he said the O word What was the number? Eight? Yeah And he hit or it? Six or so, I don't know We had a, uh, uh, we had a number of people on the instant feedback who, who were having an over-under contest on the number of times the word Ozarks came up Uh I think we hit, hit about six right on the number there. All right. Very cool stuff. Good stuff. Uh, what do we have lined up for next week? We're trying to get Brent Chapman. Yeah, we're right. working on that. I called him. He didn't answer. I didn't leave a message. I'll try to get a hold of him again today. Uh, and then also, uh, depending on how the FLW Tour stop on the Harris chain goes down, yeah. uh, someone from that derby who fished for four days. My lineup is very vanilla. Yeah, so is mine. But my, my theory on the fantasy fishing is almost like the guys who are fishing in the tournaments. Like, there's a number of guys who are going to catch them there. Just go with it. Get through the Florida tournaments, and then you can make your make your points up in the other tournaments <laughs> when a lot of other guys. I went all Florida with Andy Morgan and Brian Thrift, and I yeah. said the last show I was going to go with the two Texas guys at, uh, uh, with Castledine and Cecil, and Dave called me and talked me out of it. So I hope, I hope... It wasn't a bad decision on my part, but we'll see how it gets done on the Harris chain. Uh, see for the live weigh-in there. It takes a little bit longer now that they got like 400 guys going through the weigh-in. But Hey, don't forget, please, if you're listening to us on iTunes, make sure you go in. Give us a review. What is it, ranking or rate yeah. us? Five stars is Five, always, always yeah. preferred. Is it ranking or rating? I don't know. One of the two. It's one It doesn't matter. But I think you <laughs> click on the stars and you can write things. Yeah. Uh, please give us feedback. Let us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. Also head over to uh, Bass Talk Live on the Facebook page. That has all of the recap shows, all of the upcoming shows, all the information. You can send us a message over there. And then also yeah. go like the Bass Zone page uh, where you can see everything that's going on with the one-on-one -on -one live and on-location stuff. Hey, how many years have I been doing the classic odds? It goes back to yeah. the Judas years, doesn't it? Uh, no, I don't know. I think I think seven that's or eight where we, years. We started it anyway. A long time. That the is original, the classic original odds. classic odds from a betting perspective. We are going to set the line. That's coming up here in a week or two. So I'm actually working on that. I got to see what the weather 
is going to play out. Yeah, to. you've made some enemies with your uh, with your odds before in past years. <laughs> you've created some I mean, controversy it, it, it amongst. Makes no sense. Had family members email you. <laughs> it makes no sense to put odds out right now when the weather is going to have a dramatic effect on setting the odds in this event. I hear you. They're having record temps down there right now. Yeah, it's going to cool you. off a little bit. You're treating as the hypothetical bookie, so you want to have all the conditions. Yeah. And all, take out all the unknown factors so you can better set the odds. Yeah. Yep. Well, that all was right. the good stuff with Mike. Yeah, great stuff. Thank you, Mike, for being on. And we will be back on Tuesday. Hopefully, we will be thawed out from the ice that is just blanketed Oklahoma and uh, surrounding areas. It's just ugh, it's br- brutal. Yep. You can go out and skate on it right now. I'm considering it. (laughs) All right, everybody be safe. We'll talk to you on Tuesday.